don't know where to go either. All right. We shouldn't be driving here. I know that. Okay. I don't know where to go though, Shannon. Okay. I really don't know what to do. Okay. Keep going. We have no place to go but forward. I'm just trying to figure out how to fucking get off this. Why did it take me here? I don't know. This is so fucking dangerous. Yeah, I know it is. I, I'm going to say that that's actually accurate, Zach, because this, why did it take me here? It took me off the highway completely. I can't. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. There be a road down here. Oh, my God. Is that a road? It might be. Or is that train track? Just be careful. Fucking crazy. Can you move over a little bit more? Thank you. I Oh my god. Try to oh, oh, over them. Oh, over them. No. oh god. No. That's it. No. We're wrecked. We're wrecked. Oh fuck. No. That's it. We're wrecked. Jason! What? Call the cops! Yeah, we're calling the cops. It's on the run, shit. She fucking got it. Oh my god, she she's it. fucking badass. Oh my god. We're still stuck, Phil, dude. Okay, no, I maybe not. We can get over here. Baby girls. Gavin, yeah, that's the poor boy. We have a flat tire. We have a flat tire. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, it's on zero. Yeah, we need to get, yeah. Call the cops. Oh, my God. Move forward over there. Okay. And go over there. Oh. that fucking car. Say I need to fucking die. Why should I fucking die when I'm trying to fucking help you? And I have been this entire thing. All day I've been trying to fucking help you and you've been doing nothing but treating me like fucking shit, dude. Just lie there and be in pain for all I fucking care. You deserve it at this fucking point. This is what I'm talking about, Jason. You taking your pain out on others. And hurting others. You go, or you sitting there begging out to Jesus saying, I promise Jesus, I'm never going to freaking hurt anyone. And the next minute you're telling people to die. Are you kidding me, dude? Who do you really serve? Jesus or yourself? Oh <laughs> God, it's such good. It's fries. so I, Oh, the fries. No, 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 you don't understand. You have to like experience the fried pie. This is experience the fried pie. This fried pie. This is we got into the office but we didn't we weren't able to have the appointment. So don't be mad at Shani for this, alright? Because this it's, things happen guys. I hate that goddamn doctor. I couldn't take an Uber. I couldn't take an Uber because my phone we we are using an app for my phone number, right? I don't have a normal fucking phone line, right? Yep. So I'm sitting there like... Looking at my tits and just... Fuck this fucking world. Of this Delta... Skittles. Right? I don't want any trolling. I don't think it's appropriate to get personal with people on the internet.
What? I'm making so much money on YouTube where I can pay my power bill, my internet bill, and my phone bill. So I can pay all three of those bills. Rent, on the other hand, that's challenging right now. We'll figure it out. But I'm certainly not going to quit a job where I'm making just as much as I would on minimum minimum wage. You know, that's that's very foolish and dumb. In part one of this deep dive, I explained who Shani and Jason, or Revelation News, or Rev, were in depth. We discussed their upbringing, how these two ended up together, their abusive relationship, and began to dive into some of their main issues on the platform. However, we barely scratched the surface. So today, we are going to dive further into the lives of Shani and Rev, the worst log cows on the internet. I just got this eviction notice that we gotta be kicked out here in the weekend and we're losing our fucking car and everything all at once. I need fucking help. I don't know what to do. I'm fucking panicking. I've tried all again. My fucking phone, it's, they sent me a fucking shitty fucking phone and it's gone. I need fucking help. Someone help me. I worked my ass off trying to do as much as I can and I sent fucking Krista the $50 back by fucking accident? I need G-Man. Okay, so can someone severely get me hold of G-Man? Cause I need him, I need someone. Someone in my life. Cause I, don't, I just don't know what to do. You know, I say we just pack up the car what we can and we just head out to Pennsylvania. There's nothing else we can fucking do. Shani and Rev were evicted by their landlord on December 6, 2019. The docket remarks forcible entry and detainer, which means they were evicted by the police with force. This eviction was nicknamed the Eviction Saga due to a live stream where Shani came on the platform screaming and yelling upon getting their eviction notice. This would have been one thing, but the children were there, and I watched this along with everyone else in horror thinking, stop flipping out and ensure your kids aren't upset about this situation and handle it like a grown woman. Mind you, grown women like myself pay our rent and don't get evicted. I deserve this as karma after all the hate I put out on people. I don't put hate out on, on anyone. They do it to me. What are you talking about? I put hate on people. I tell people to do better. I tried. I was working so hard. I worked so hard for nothing. Yeah, we could go back east and I can switch my stuff, I guess, the electronics to fucking Pennsylvania, I guess. I know we should sell what we can't, what we can't fit in the vehicle. I'm trying to tell him that so we have extra money. After the two of them did nothing to save their family the hassle of being evicted and homeless, they left the home in shambles. People showed up to the home after Rev invited them to come take whatever they wanted since the couple were moving. 
Whenever Rev and Shani moved with their family, instead of packing up everything and taking it with them or selling it so that they can have money, they left almost everything behind, even the furniture and the belongings of the boys. A lot of people found this odd, myself included, and it makes me wonder if that proves just how lazy Shani truly is. This sparked allegations by Shani and Rev of break and entry after a viewer went to Shani and Rev's last home and recorded the state it was in when they left. This opened up everyone's eyes to the fact that the boys were living in absolute filth, along with the two cats that the family owned. The cat litter boxes were overflowing, the boys' bed sheets were stained black, garbage was strewn all around the home, and it appeared people weren't potty trained. Yeah, not just the children, the adults as well. Yeah. The garage door at our address is open. Anybody in Colorado that's near it, go in and get anything you can. There's tons of stuff that's worth a lot of money. When you walk in, the first smell is feces, um, some scented something or another. Lots of like tobacco smell, probably something mixed with uh, probably something heavily mixed with um, oh god, I can't think, it's weird. It smells like weed, but like really bad weed and poop and ugh. maybe like blunt rolls. There's just shit everywhere. I'm not even sure what any of this is. But it looks like to be blood on the wall. Dried up quite a bit of it. Yeah, that's blood. All over the wall. God knows how long. That stinks. Oh, that reeks. What? Okay, yeah, no, see? Ooh. Like, oh, this is terrible. I mean, the freezer's gross, but that refrigerator's. <laughs> this is a child's bed. For this. Again, I was paid to come in here and just take a film and get the hell out. So that's what I'm doing. I gotta hold my breath in here because I can smell this is where it's coming from. They've left the bathroom lights on and the uh, vent um, here. It's just god awful. They haven't cleaned this litter box at all. I want to try to say they were smoking weed, but I don't, it don't smell like it. It smells like it was just, I'm walking over a two foot tall pile of clothes right now, like. Can of cat food sitting over in this place. It's just god awful. Food, trash, sink. Oh, here's another fucking closet, hell. This room smells like this. It looks like this early child's room, obviously. It's just it's like they never clean. There's no lights in this bathroom, but I can't remember that right there. It smells so bad. There's flies in the sink. Everyone saw how disgusting a disarrayed house was when we were trying to get everything out of it that we could. Do you know the state of a house when you have like two days to move? Oh my god. They cost tens of thousands of dollars this place. 
This is fucking ridiculous. So this is the kids' bathroom. Oh, what the fuck? I think that's for the guinea pig. It's full of shit. This is the kids' bathroom. Oh, fucking hell! I'll just fucking get this. Oh my god! How does it feel like? How do you get that? This is exactly why. 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 This I think it's like he's actually in the bedroom. Yeah. Well, at least he gets out of the camera. He doesn't have it at all. Unless it could be on the people, then. Which is good, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to take away from the uh, PS5 and the idea. Yeah. 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 Hey, there's beer. He's been drinking. Having fun yet? Having fun? Oh, I just want to let everyone know the police have been notified of someone breaking into my house. Thanks. After this, Shani and Rev drove around with the boys in the van, recording their journey as if they were now living the van life. Although Shani was no Gabby Petito, she was more like Brian Laundrie. Too soon? Sorry. They even got into a car accident during the trip with the boys in the back seat, with all of their belongings piled on top of them in what could have been a dangerous crash. They were lucky to not have been more injured, and we all watched in horror as Shani picked up the vehicle and lifted it back upright after it had turned on its side in the accident. This was a darn van, and she claimed to be injured and unable to work. So how she pick up the van? Some might claim that she was in a state of motherly strength, but if you know Shani as well as I do, you know she has no motherly instinct, so I doubt it. She's just a strong woman who can lift vans because fat. and saying you things lie. that is not true, Shani, okay? I'm sorry, I can't deal with you no more. A liar, you know a, liar, a 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 liar, I pay. Fuck you, G-Man. Like, seriously, fuck you. Fuck you. You keep bashing people, men who have long fucking hair. When the person who gave you a fucking house has fucking long hair. Or had long hair. And fixing to have girly long hair again. You want to go and bash everyone about how they look. Do you remember that part when Jesus said, do not judge according to appearances but judge righteously g-man you're you're back to fucking bashing people and treating them like shit fuck you g-man you know what my little gift didn't teach you a fucking thing did it not a goddamn thing would you buy a house for one dollar what if the house was falling apart and belonged to a couple who had teenage children not potty trained and we question if shanny is fully potty trained well, G-Men bought Rev and Shani's old home for a dollar. Rev got an inheritance from his family, and this included a house. He moved in with Shani, and they lived there for several months until they decided the property taxes were too expensive. So they literally sold G-Man the house. He gladly moved in and agreed to fix the place up. Yes, this happened before the eviction saga, so a lot of people were upset with them for selling G-Man the home, then ending up homeless. It just does not make any sense. G-Man was what someone described as a simp. He was the couple's best friend and the only person they could depend on at the time. He would bail them out, literally, and often lend them money for their cigarettes, food, and Delta 8. A while after G-Man moved in and Shani and Rev took off to find a new home, they began to argue. The relationship between these three is the oddest one I have seen on here in ages. I can't describe it. 
It is almost as if Rev is G-Man's cuck, but then Shani will usually stick up for Rev against G-Man. So that's bizarre in here. Just watch them argue. Show me the spirit of self-control here for a moment. The fruit of the spirit. Show me the spirit of self-control. You really are the one really talking about the spirit of self-control, you. Seriously, you. You. Spirit of self-control, you. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's what I thought. Be silent. Okay, so this is our main channel, Shani for Christ here. Shani made several videos today lying about me, saying, saying, I lie about you. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. This video you made was this, okay? You you made a video saying three years of ministry ruined. Then you made a video. Then you made another video getting mad at me about me saying that Jesus H. was long, which had nothing to do with Rev, but you brought that up. All right. You, 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 you can't be hypocritical. You can't be now. You made all these ridiculous videos today. You know hypocrite is? Two of your best friends have fucking long hair. That's what you're doing right now. Okay. So, who have long hair? Who are your best friends? Okay. Okay. So, so going back to my, going back to my, Shani, we both can't talk at the same time. You can't, you can't talk at the same time. That's what you, you, you got me mad. You got me mad. You lied to me about money, G-Man. I told you not to lie about me. Shani, you gotta let me talk, Shani. If you don't let me talk, you're guilty, Shani. You're guilty, Shani. You're guilty, Shani. You're guilty, Shani. You're guilty, So anyway, uh, uh, Shani. Why don't you address it, G-Man? Why don't you address it? 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 Why don't are you gonna let me talk? Are you gonna let me talk? Blah 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 blah. Are you gonna let me talk? You're a liar. I'm a liar. I haven't said nothing. You won't You're shut a liar. up. You're a liar. I want the Christians to come in here, and I want you guys to see how she's behaving right now. So I don't care. You, you need to answer that question. What happened to the money that I gave you for the phone? You don't even know what I You don't even know what I What happened to the money I gave you for the phone? Keep talking. Hey Shani, if it, hey Shani, if he used, hey Shani, hey Shani, real quick, can I say something? If he used that money for food, wouldn't that be better than turning his phone on? Which he said he used it for food. He asked me specifically crying on the phone asking for money for his phone. I was not crying on the phone. I was not crying on the phone, and I got witnesses. I was not crying on the phone. So, 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 so anyways, so, 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 if he, 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 this is how they win debates on here. Blah, 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 blah. Don't let nobody say anything. Get it, Shani, come on. I can't answer a question if you're talking, Shani. Answer my question. What are you talking if you're talking, Shani? I can't answer a question if you're talking. What did you do with the money? Okay, so. let's. What did you do with the money? Let's start from December, and let's see if you can catch up this time, okay? You gave me $100 for Christmas, and before that, you gave me $200 for food, okay? Uh -huh. No. January, we're not in January yet. Shut no. up. Liar. Liar. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, Shani. Keep talking. Keep talking, Shani. Okay? Then January got here, all right? You gave me $200 for food, all right? You gave Two me weeks ago. Let me finish. Two weeks ago. Danny, you gotta let me finish. If we was in court, the judge would throw you in jail because you were in court. So shove it up your ass. Let me talk, okay? I'm gonna bring my proof. I don't really know what I'm talking about. I don't give a shit what your proof is. You're a liar. I have two phones. I have the ministry phone and I have uh my 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 regular phone. My other phone, the battery is dead in the other room. <laughs> this back and forth resulted in G-Man reaching out to Shani's haters eventually and mending any broken bridges from the past. It also resulted in his and Shani and Rev's friendship completely breaking up and Shani accusing G-Man of wanting her. They went back and forth about whether or not they wanted to bang each other for quite a while and honestly, a lot of their back and forths ridiculous to me. G-Man began to speak out about how they treated the children. Remember, during all this crazy stuff, there are two children in Rev and Shani's care, and at this stage, the boys were entering their teen years. Now, I will say, G-Man is not a saint. 
and he is a large part of the Shanty for Christ story. But he's also a law cow in his own right. In fact, some would argue he was the law cow that introduced them to Shanny and Rep. So, I'm going to do a deep dive on him in future, and that's where we will discuss most of this drama with them. I know there's a lot missing here, but their back and forth need its own video, so bear with me. Again, if you think there's something that should have been known to this story that I did not mention, feel free to tell me it in the comments down below. A lot of people speculated that Shani and Rev were abusive to the boys, but it wasn't until G-Man spoke out about it that it became a reality, and people really fought hard to have the children removed from Shani and Rev's care. Oh my god, folks. Look at this. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see if I can tilt it. Oh. That is called the Lazy Man's Fondue. That looks nice. Mmm. Oh, wow. That sort of tastes pizza y. It reminds me of the pizza combos. Yeah. I wish I could put this higher, but whatever. This is Mukbang and at Dave and Buster's. Mukbang. Fucking fondue style. I do this like this for you. Oh my god, man. Oh yeah. It's so good. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Cheese pool. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with that. Much better and satisfying. It's really good. I know, I love how it turned out. It's cute as hell. Mm. 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 How do you think the boys are doing? Fine. That last bite. You're watching football and the kids. You're like Tim Allen on Home Improvement now. Um, a, 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 a to go container of that cheesecake thing. Up until just before the eviction saga took place, Shani and Rev were living large. You see, Rev's parents had passed away and left him not only the house he sold to G-Man for a buck, but he was also left $700,000. That is enough money that most of us would be set for life if we had received it. However, after buying lavish gifts for the family, ordering Uber Eats nightly, buying gold mashed potatoes, and Lord knows how many cigarettes or how much Delta ate, Rev ended up broke within a year and a half. Yeah, these two spent $700,000 in less than two years and barely a cent was spent on the children. Many people have tried to make lists of what they've spent their money on, and it's almost impossible for any of us to fathom spending that amount of money in such little time and having nothing to show for it. But that's what makes these two law cows. Like most couples, money problems caused issues, and we saw that Rev and Shani were happiest during the time that they had all this money. The second the money ran out, so did their happiness and their love for each other. And apparently, so did their love for the boys. Yeah, but how would they know I'm a bad parent? They don't live with me. Maybe they, maybe they see videos. Now Zachary wants to kill himself! My baby! He just spent yesterday and he wants to die! Because of you! That cat better fully be on your lap. Pull him all the way up! Now! Move! Now! Pull him up! Get the cat on your lap, you fucking idiot! <laughs> If he's on that floor again, you are getting your ass beat. My sons, as soon as CPS came back in life, both of them tried to commit suicide. 
they were talking about it. And I had to go to the schools, and then I had to go and take them to the psychologist. And this was all during COVID-19, so it was like, oh my god. They put William on suicide watch. I didn't want him to experience the things I've experienced. I tried my whole life trying to shield him from this shit. It's not funny when you see your child yeah, you're in, in a suicide watch room. There's a lot of guys who wish they could be smoking this shit right now. A lot of guys be like, I'd be taking it better than her, bitch. Would you? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Part of my kids to chaos. I didn't end up, I didn't want this to happen. This is, guys, literally, for real, this is where the GPS took us, man. That GPS sucked. Yeah. No, we're not back on the road. We're stuck on fucking train tracks. Literally. And almost died. Stop mentioning my goddamn kids, assholes. Shani seemed to love to torture her children with the camera and the fact she was a content creator on the used tubes. She would film the boys when they were against being on camera. Both the boys were going on high school age and neither were potty trained. Again, this became more noticeable when everyone saw the state of the boys' bedrooms and even their bathroom where the overflowing cat poop box sat fermenting and no longer was used by the cats. They had to have taken one look at that thing and been like, what kind of outhouse be this, bruh? Shani would also scream at the boys, especially if they interrupted her when she was recording or streaming. At her old place, Shani and Rev had recorded in the upstairs hallway and on the stairs. It is said the boys were forced to stay in their rooms and weren't allowed to leave their rooms for even a glass of water because, heaven forbid, they disturbed their parents' mukbang fighting video. Needless to say, the trolls who a-logged Shani noticed she was neglectful and abusive to her children, and tons of content creators began to speak out about such, even going as far as to react to the videos that included the boys. I don't want to do that or have them in my video if I can avoid it, and therefore you're going to have to check out some of the reactors of Shani and Revs to see proof of that. I have left some great ones in the description below. Please go do that, as again, I want to avoid showing the boys in this video. Thanks for understanding that, guys. The reactors kept speaking out about how Shani was neglectful and abusive towards the boys, and Shani and Rev would retaliate by raging out, usually in close proximity to the boys, which is never good. This resulted in several people calling Child Protective Services, CPS, several times. Shani lost her children once for several months due to this and worked to get them back. It is my understanding they have had dozens of CPS visits, and some people believe they moved around often in order to run away from CPS before they could take custody of the children. Shani's tactic for deflecting criticism was to claim that her detractors were making her son suicidal because of the constant visits from Child Protective Services. This has been a large problem. She has also outed one of her sons as being in the LGBTQ plus community, and a lot of people had an issue with that, myself included. It's just shitty to out anyone before they come out themselves, let alone your own child for all the interwebs. After all this back and forth where cow wranglers would accuse Shani and Rev of abuse and they would rage out in return, it did finally result in Shani and Rev losing custody of the boys. At this point, they began to reside at Rev's uncle's house. He had let them stay there before and they destroyed the place and this time when they were staying with his uncle, it wasn't much different. I'm going to warn you that going forward, things get a bit darker. I hate trigger warnings, but just know that, okay? Cool. Let's continue on. On June 28th of 2022, the boys were removed from Shani and Rev's custody at last. This was celebrated across all platforms, as everyone who watched Shani as a mom in horror were confident the boys would now go on to have better lives. Now, what happened is sort of up for debate. You see, the stories kept changing, so bear with me again. Here it is. I had to do something today. And I had to put... 
my sons first, okay? I know I don't usually talk about my sons, but this does involve my sons. In case people don't know here on Twitch, um, I'm extremely sick. Um, we don't know what's going on with me, but I'm very sick. I've had seizures. I've, 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 I have a hard time walking. I just have it rough functioning. So today I give my sons up to foster care temporarily so I can get myself better. I feel like a fool. I'm in my house. I'm safe. And Jason's in jail. And, um, I hope I can make it through. I can't drive. My legs won't work. <laughs> I I feel like a fool that I let this relationship go on for so long. You know. It's so gross what he did. Like, how can you kick an autistic child in the head and in the stomach? How could you do that? Date yourself for a long time. Oh, I will. Oh, I will. I will love the hell out of myself because no one else will. He's in the county prison right now um he's in uh, because of covid all of the people are in isolation so this dude has been like in isolation for several days now in the county prison and they have him for simple assault and the bail is uh 10 percent of five thousand so five hundred dollars is we're looking at. I'm making calls to try to get the money right now um, to get him bailed out so at least he can and also I am planning on getting the charges dropped for him or at least the judge to understand the fact that this is caused by a medication error. Um, I'm trying to get it through the police officer to get it dropped. Maybe I could get it dropped through the DA. Um, so I gotta work, I'm waiting for calls for that right now. Um, hopefully I can get that $500. I have to take care of my, my health. I gotta take care of my health. Where's Jason? Jason! <laughs> play some Street Fighter with Jason. Retro Gaming is huge on Twitch. Yeah, we could do that. We could play some Donkey Kong. And, you know, just try our best to have some fun. Shani and Rev were arguing with Shani's son. Her son ran to the bedroom and was either on the bed or on the floor when Rev kicked him either in the stomach, the head, or not that badly. Again, the story has changed often. What we do know for sure is there was an incident involving Rev abusing the younger son, and it resulted in the younger boy being hurt enough that when cops appeared, they did charge Rev with child abuse. Now, there have been some people who have questioned if Shani was the abuser and Rev took the fall. Intriguing, although I don't have much proof besides the story never makes sense and keeps changing. 
What we do know is that shortly after Rev was released from jail for the abuse of her child, Shani invited him back into the home. Why was he released from jail, you ask? Well, Shani refused to show up to court and testify, so the charges against Rev were dropped and he was free to go. He returned home and life for them went back to normal, going out to eat and popping into the gas station. This resulted in a woman who goes by one bad bitch on the platform seeing Shani and Rev were back together due to her working at said gas station. You see, Rev was not allowed back at the house or near the youngest boy after his charges were laid. Shani promised CPS that he would no longer be welcome in her home. So one bad bitch called CPS and made a report. At the same time, some claimed the reaction channel Carrie called in with some text messages Shani sent her about how scared the boys were to have Rev back home. However, there's some drama and gatekeeping surrounding all that, and I don't want to get into it. I'm just going over what happened, guys. Don't come for me, for fuck's sake. CPS showed up and took custody of the boys, which resulted in Shani raging out and blaming the internet for her boys being taken, screaming, you took them from me at Rev, as he tried to calm her down. This is a famous moment for them. The boys were brought to foster care and have been in a foster family's care for just over a year now. I still cannot believe it's been a year, but we all wish them all the best going forward. I hope they can recover and go off to have healthy, happy lives as adults. Shani, though, still tries to use both of them for pity points on the internet. I was hoping this deep dive was going to be done in two parts. However, recently Shani and Rev returned to the internet, and that was after a lot of drama popped off with them losing their children, raging out over it at everyone else, and then not doing anything to get custody of the boys back. I want to dive deeply into that drama and into Shani's cancer scam. I think it's important we highlight her several grifts and discuss how she treated the people who have tried to help her along the way as well. So I'm going to end this part here and do a part three. Thanks so much for watching and for the support of my channel. Please do all those YouTube things and I'll see you in a couple weeks with part three of the Shani for Christ deep dive, the worst law cow on the internet. Internet. This part has been a roller coaster of emotions, so please remember to practice self care. Much love to all of you. I'm. Oh my god. Try to. Oh, oh. over them! Oh, over them! Oh. oh god! No! All day I've been trying to fucking help you, and you've been doing nothing but treating me like fucking shit, dude! No, 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 you don't understand. You have to, like, experience. So I'm sitting there like... Looking at my tits and just... Stop it. Get some help. Nation. They call me a